basket he was just inside the line the laker lead is three again how about the voice of this young guy key matchup we talked about look at reggie miller squaring him up these two guys played one-on-one -on -one all summer in la kobe takes it between his leg he pulls it back hits the jumper and then sort of gives it you know take your time everything's cool i'm not gonna let us lose this game they gotta get a stop here and give themselves a chance to take the lead and you know kobe is gonna go to work again here he is over Jackson. How good is this kid? Kobe Bryant, once again, the ball is going to be in his hands. How much do you miss a guy when you don't have him? You miss him for this right here. Huge jump shot. Miller hands it inside to Crozier. 14 on the shot clock as the ball was knocked away. Shaw on the dribble. Shot clock at 12. So you don't want to foul now because you got one to give. They won't shoot free throws. Shaw running one-hander. Followed in by Kobe Bryant. Again, offensive rebounds. The Lakers have a 3-1 lead. Yeah, so uh wasn't easy to come in here and do this today. But you know, as they say, the saying goes, J Mo, the show must go on, right? Facts. You know? Um man, I know a lot of you listening uh heard by now that uh, Kobe Bryant passed away along with his daughter, Gianna. Uh a lot of y'all might have seen Gianna uh and on the uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, you know, she was up and coming. She had the little, she had that mama mentality. She was the next one up. Right. Uh, yeah. And she was on that, the helicopter too. So uh, no words to explain, man, or explain the feeling. Uh, not just laker fans not just basketball fans but anybody has a heart you know if you're human and have a heart you have kids you have family you feel this one facts you know um i just got off the the phone with a <clears throat> friend of mine who you know he was kobe's uh first manager uh mike harris he started Kobe Bryant's fan club uh, back in 96. Uh, he was like the big homie to Kobe. Right. You know, and he was my brother. He was my teammate at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Uh, I moved to Philly for a short time, and that's who I live with. I live with Mike, and, and, and Mike is the uh, first cousin of Mike McCurry from Boys to Men. So he started off as the road manager for Boys to Men. And from that, he developed relationships and, and you know, different things. And sport, sports was always his thing. So knowing Kobe coming up, Kobe knowing him, Kobe reached out. And uh, with, you know, Mike's Connects, he uh, got Kobe Bryant a date with Brandy for his senior prom. Right. I don't know if you all some folks remember that. It was back in 96. And also, Kobe had a guest appearance on Moesha. Uh, again, that was through Mike. And, uh, you know, it was, you can see Kobe coming up as a young cat. He, he wasn't like LeBron in the fact that you saw the potential with Kobe, but it took him a few years to develop that potential. Right. Where LeBron had, <laughs> LeBron James was like a grown man, you know, when he first came into the league out of high school. Remember, these guys are coming out of high school. So it took about three years before Kobe uh, became a starter for the Lakers. 
Right. Because he got on a team that already has Shaq and Nick Van Exel and Eddie Jones and Eldon Campbell. So that Laker team that Kobe uh, became a part of, they were already established. They just made the playoffs and, you know, they got uh, Kobe through a trade, draft day trade through the Charlotte Hornets. Sean, Charlotte drafted Kobe and they traded him for Vlade Divac on draft day. So that's when he became a Laker. And so automatically it's like, okay, we got this young guy, but we're not sure what he's going to bring to the team. But, you know, he has a lot of potential. Right. Kobe was a guy that worked hard, kind of like Michael Jordan did, you know. And, and, and obviously, you know, it looked, you watch Kobe g- growing up and watching him as he developed. He had a lot of Michael Jordan traits because he studied Michael all the way down to the way he chewed his gum, you know, what I mean? <laughs> Just like Michael Jordan. Right. So, um, yeah. So, and, and with me being a Laker fan since 79, I mean, I'm going back with magic and, and, and everybody and, you know, and honestly, to be, to be honest, when, when Kobe first went to the Lakers, I didn't like him. I thought he was greedy. He I shot thought the ball he was too a much. gunner. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, he shoot too yeah. much. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I remember that the, the Kobe and Eddie Jones were the two players that the Lakers were, it, it was like they can't play together because they play the same position. So we got to get rid of one of them. So I was hoping at that time that get rid of Kobe because he, he, he shoot too much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But they ended up getting rid of Eddie Jones. Good thing I wasn't the owner of the Lakers because I'd have been ran out of town. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So that, that's the best thing they could ever done. Was, and I love Eddie Jones, but they kept the young guy, Kobe Bryant, and as they say, the rest is history. And to see uh, what he's done for the league, what he's done for the NBA, what he's done for the Lakers. I'm a, like I said, I'm a Laker fan uh, since I've ever known anything about basketball. And to, to see how the players that are coming into the league now, like Kobe is – Today's your your favorite basketball ball player of today, Kobe, was their favorite player. That's right. You know what I'm saying. So a lot of what you see of these young guys coming up, they looked up to Kobe, and Kobe was still an ambassador to the game. A lot of times you see guys retire and they kind of fade to the back, you know. Right. But Kobe stayed around and he was at the Lakers games and you know we just saw a picture um, earlier with LeBron dapping Kobe up on the sideline. You know he and his daughter Gianna. We're at the game, and he he was a, still an ambassador for the NBA, but he was also an, amb- an ambassador for the Lakers. Right. You know, he was a huge reason, along with Magic Johnson, why LeBron James even went to the Lakers. That's true. You know? Yeah. So it's like LeBron is carrying that torch, but then to see LeBron uh, surpass Kobe, number three on the all-time scoring list in the NBA last night, and LeBron gave a shout to Kobe. He had on... On the sneakers, he had written on there, Mamba, number uh-huh. eight, number 24. You know, and, and and then coming into the station today and hearing what's happening. And, you know, I, you know, you, you see these fake news. You know, Bill Cosby died years ago. Right. According, yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> according to social media. Eddie Murphy. True. You know, they had all these, you know, put these stories out, these people dying, and, and it's not true. So I saw that initially, and I'm like, ah, that's another one of them. You yeah, know? I did too. Yeah. Yeah. But I was seeing it too much, and I was seeing it, and then I was seeing it from credible sources. Right. You know, and I immediately hit Mike because I know if anybody would know, I know in my circle, Mike would know. Right. Mike Harris. And I hit him and asked him, was that true? That's all the, everything we hear out there on social media. Is it true? And he said, it is. Right. So then Cheese had told me about, you know, he, he seen some. Uh, and then you too, J-Mo, where his, his daughter possibly could been had could have been in the crash as well. So I, like, man, nah, 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 not not that, not her too. Yeah. And uh, so I hit Mike again, and well, I, I texted him at first, and then I called him, and I I could hear in his voice when he answered the phone that he wasn't himself. So I asked him, I said, do you, you feel like talking? And he's like, yeah, it's you, it's you, you know. So. Um, I asked him, was it true about his daughter? And he said, yeah. And we talked briefly. And he said, you're, you're the only person I've talked to so far that I haven't cried. But every person I've talked to, I, I, I've been crying all, all day. And ever since I heard the news. And he's like, man, it, it was good to hear your voice, you know, speaking to me. And 
sometimes, you know, you, you, you're in the, cause granted, Mike is a, is a, an agent manager slash manager for, he has a uh, Andre Iguodala, you know, he had Rasheed Wallace. Wow. Um, Terrell Owens, Ray Lewis. Wow. I mean, there's a lot of guys that he, he's managed and, and, and done. Um, he's gotten shoe deals for a lot of people and different, uh, you know, he brokered so many deals uh, for so many people in the NFL and the NBA. And I don't know, and J-Mo, you know, sometimes you get consumed with the industry. Yeah. That yeah. you realize it's a lot of fake people. Facts. And sometimes you just need family. You need people from home. Right. To get that that genuine feeling from. That's true. Yeah. And, and, and I felt that from Mike today when I talked to him, you know, he was like, man, thanks for calling, you know. I hadn't talked. I haven't talked to Mike. We text from time to time, but I hadn't talked to him in about two years. Wow. You know? Yeah. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And uh, it, it's just, it's heartbreaking in so many different ways, man. And I know a lot of fans who, and I understand that because as fans, especially when you, a team that you love and you watch a player yeah. from the beginning and and then when this happened, it felt like you lost a family member. That's right. You know? Right. So I know that feeling. Some people like, ah, he was just an NBA player. He was just an actor or, you know, whoever it may be. When some, a celebrity passed, you know, and, and it hits people differently. But I think when it comes to sports, it hits them even more so, because, especially when you play the sport, you know, and it's, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. the players that you look up to and you model your game after and you, you respect. It, it hits even more so. And it, it, you take away that celebrity element, and then you realize there's a human aspect to it, too. This man had kids. He had a wife, mother and father, family. That's true. You know? Yeah. And yeah. you take all that stuff away. At the end of the day, we're all human. But You know? We bleed blood. And that, man, you know, we just laid the rest of good brother Corey Poon um, last week. Uh, but this past Saturday, um, we just... Laid to rest, um, Shelton, Scotty, Scott, yeah, in Easton. Uh huh. You know, three weeks ago, personally, I had to lay to rest my uncle, uh, Charles Leon Adams. I mean, like three weeks in a row, I had to go to three funerals three weeks in a row in January. And now, you know, although Kobe, I don't know Kobe personally, but I. You know, it said uh, we it was six degrees of separation uh-huh. from almost everybody in the world. Like, I may not know him. I may not know, um, I don't know, Christopher Williams, but J-Mo knows him. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. I may not know Jay-Z personally. Right. But J-Mo knows him. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. th- 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 there's a connection we have, you know, and it's like with Mike. Like, I don't know. By the time I started working with Mike, he and Kobe weren't, uh, they were cool. You know, they were cool, and they always stayed in contact. But, right. you know, he wasn't uh, working with Kobe at the time. I went with Mike in uh, 2000. And uh, we also did a basketball camp in Easton uh, with Theo Ratliff. He wow. was a, a Philadelphia 76er. Uh-huh. And we did a camp right at um, Easton High School, you know. and uh, So through Mike, I know quite a few people. I met some, uh, quite a few, and then some I didn't. But th- just knowing that, we talked about it earlier, Jay. And we, we don't like to question God and what goes on in life. But no, we should question things. We should question things. You know? We may not always get the answer. Right. But uh-huh. we, we look at Kobe with what he's done and not just on the basketball court, but also, you know, he was a philanthropist. Right. You know, uh-huh. he, he reached out to the young guys. He worked out with a lot of the young guys, you know, um Jason Tatum and um, a lot, a of, lot of the NBA, the, the young guys look to Kobe, and and Kobe could have be, you know, he could be at the point now, like I, I don't have time, I, you know, I'm not doing that, you know, what I'm saying, I'm, I'm Paul, I'm done with basketball, but right. he would reach back and help those kids, you know, help the younger guys, Kyrie uh-huh. Irving, you know, so many right. of the younger guys, um, and he he continued to give back, and you know, we 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 question. Why, why some people are so evil, uh, 
do so many evil things in life and they seem to prosper. They seem to live forever. Uh huh. That's true. You know, look at them and they doing this reckless abandon, doing whatever, and they live. Yeah. We always hear the saying, the good die young. That's facts. Mm -hmm. But I, it's not a cliche. It's not a cute saying. Like, we see that now more and more and more. No doubt about it. And, and with that, if you, if, if you have a belief in God, if you have a belief in a higher power, you ask the question, why? Huh. Yeah. You know, why? We got questions, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Not only why Kobe, why his daughter? Right. She had a whole life to live. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. She's gone now. Just like that. You Great know? Eye. So that goes to show, I don't care how much money you have, I don't care how much influence you have, how much fame you have. We, we're, 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 we're still mortal. Truth. You know? That's we're true. not invincible. You know, a lot of guys come on the show. We, we have a platform for, for guys to come on the show and you know, they want to, if they, 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 they aspire to rap, they aspire to sing or whatever it may be. And at the end of the day, they want that to be what they do for the rest of their lives. They want to rap or whatever their craft is to make enough money to live off of and do nothing else. Right. And that's great. But some people think it, big say more money, more problems. You better believe it. So we think we get all this money, we get this fame and then we're, um, good forever. Yeah, not yeah, and it's like the rest of it, like life will be good for yeah. you know the rest of it. No, don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You know, now we don't know what happened with the helicopter. You know, you're gonna hear all type of conspiracy theories. It's the Illuminati. Oh yeah, they and already, already started that already. Yeah, and I already hear people talking about well, yeah, you know, LeBron passed him on the uh, all time scoring chart. So and then he dies the next day and. That has to be some Illuminati type thing. Did they sacrifice him? And yo, stop yeah. talking crazy. Like I heard that already. Come on, man. You know, but it was time. It was his time to pay up. Yeah, yeah, that type of thing. Yeah, of like we, you know? we 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 want to. And it's us. It's always black folks. We always talk this dumbass talk. Right. You know what I'm saying? Why? We down us. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. The bottom line is this. And this is a this is, should be something for every. We always hear it at the funerals. We always hear it, you know, when we go to someone's home going service. You know, well, at some point, we're going to be next. Yeah, because we're born to die. Absolutely, that's the that's the heart of the matter. Absolutely, we're born to die. We're not going to be here forever. So my pastor said at my my uncle's funeral, he said, "We have a begin date." Which we know. That's right. We know the day that we're born, but we don't know the day that we're going to die. That's right. So with that being said, you would think that because, now, now, but, but just flip this though. So we don't know we're going to die. But if we knew the date that we would die, we would, be, we would take life, we'd be a little more urgent in life. That's true. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. would do more with our family and loved ones and we would um, not procrastinate and think we got the next day. So if we knew, if I knew I was going to die, I don't know, January 2022. Right. You know, I'll put a little more urgency on everything that I'm doing. But because I don't know, I feel like I have more time. So I kind of relax on things. Right. That, that's just the mentality of us as humans, you know? Right. But wouldn't you think, though, if you really think about it, if we didn't know, we would put even more urgency on it if we didn't know. Absolutely. Because it could be tomorrow. It could be, yeah. It could be later next, on today. Next hour. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But because we 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 look at life and we look we take things for granted, you know, we we think we have forever. And then when tragedy hits, it's like, oh, you know, hug your loved ones, kiss your loved ones, and you know, all that. But then once it passes, you know, you give it time and then we back to the normal, doing whatever we normally do. No doubt about it. Every time. But I, for me, in the last three weeks, you know, again, you know, seeing, you know, hitting things are hitting close to home. I just know I know a dude now, oh, actually, a couple of them that just went this week. One of them was hit by a car, hitting one driver. Uh, actually, brother named uh, Thomas Thump Kane. He he out of a lot of his family out of Cambridge, but he lived across the bridge in Bmore, and also knew 
the rapper. You, you probably seen that on the news that made the news. Lil D, somebody. Yeah. He just hosted a show and was about to go do a show in Atlanta. And somebody came out of his apartment complex and killed him right down the parking lot. Wow. So that's show you how it's going now. Yeah. That's it. That's two in one week that in I know week. personally. You I know? had three to go last week that I know from Delaware. Three. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, you know, it, reggae, you want reggae want to say something? Well, <clears throat> as a diet Lakers fan, I mean, sometimes it's hard to to figure out if I'm mad, if I'm no mad, if I'm if I'm if I'm upset or I don't upset because I try to keep that pleasant feeling within my heart. Sometimes it's hard to do, but I have to. Um, when that when when Danny break the news to me, I could tell that something happened because I have never ever seen in all the two and a half going to three years. Of the station, I have never seen Danny come into the show looking so sad. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I bounced on him and he told me the news. And so, you know, I have to say this though, but I'm so glad and happy to know that we here at Live 97.5, we actually break the news, if not the first station to break the news officially. Because Danny was waiting for some. Um, contacts to figure if the news was real or not because when Danny break the news to me today I said nah that's a joke you know what I mean but when I look at the impression on him I could tell that you know something was wrong but we live we learn and we live and you know I know that you know God I don't know I, I believe he gone to a better place I believe he's gone to a better place, but it's so sad for a situation like that, you know, for the world of sports like that, you know what I mean? I mean, me and Danny was talking early on today that good people just gone. And people who doesn't even deserve, it's hard for me to say the word, man. People who really doesn't even deserve to be on the face of this earth right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They're still around. Yeah. You know what I mean? But my heart, my heart goes out, man, to all the Kobe fans. And um, it's just a big blow for basketball. And I know there's a lot of kids out there like Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Myself, you know. I've grown up watching the Magic Johnson, man. And, you know what I mean? The Kobe's always my fans. I don't care what they tell me about LeBron <laughs> James and this, that, and that, that, this. I said, Kobe is my man. So, you know, as a Jamaican... And, 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 and love basketball, but I don't play the game. Uh, I know Daniel and some of you guys are deep into the game. Um, you, know, you know, it's just another loss, a big loss in, 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 uh, in, in basketball. It's sport period. You know what I mean? And I'm so glad, man, that we here at Live 97.5 can take our time. Take our time. J-Mo and, and, and DJ Cheese and, and Daniel and myself, and Danny Reds, that will be able to you know, show people how much we care and the passion that we have for Kobe Bryant. Peace and love and rest in peace, <coughs> brother. Our, our IP. Yeah, Reggae, appreciate that, bro. Um, yeah, and, you know, Kobe, again, he's known as a basketball player, but it, anybody that's played any type of sport knows that, particularly at, at, when it comes to the youth, you know, basketball and sports in particular teach you so much about tools you're going to need for life. Right. You know, like working together as a team on team sports, you mm -hmm. know, realizing you're just a piece to the puzzle. So find out what it is that you're good at and you add that element to the team. Right. And then J-Mo, whatever it is that you bring to the table, you add that element to the team. Right. Cheese, you do the same. Right. It's no different than what we do here on the show. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it is with team sports. So one link can, one bad link can, can destroy the whole link. Absolutely. If it's not on the same page, if it's not together. So we learn that. We learn responsibility, being on time. You know, I know in high school, I just talked to my coach, uh, McKinley Hayward. Uh, I'm talking to him. I'm get we have to get coach on here on the show too. 
Uh, but I talked to him yesterday. He was driving through uh, Easton on his way to Bowie. He graduated from Bowie. Okay. So okay. they had a big event at Bowie. And big, big shout to Bowie's um, uh, uh, basketball team, uh, Bowie State University uh, basketball team. They, they had practice at the BAM Center. And that's building, BAM is an acronym for Building African American Minds Athletic and Education Center, just built in Easton, in the hood. Wow. Right there. It's like the version of Boys and Gore, Girls Club. Wow. Black owned. Free to all Talbot County residents. Out of county, I think, is like a, a, a small fee, monthly fee. But anyway, they invited the uh, Bowie State boys basketball team to have practice there. So the kids in the neighborhood can watch a college team have practice right in their neighborhood. Right in their neighborhood. Right in the hood. Wow. Yeah. Don't get better than that. It doesn't get better than that. So shout to Derek Daly. He's doing an incredible job. Um, but these are the, the, the guys who aspire to, to be the next Kobe Bryant, the next LeBron James, and that's Michael Jordan. Right. Um, but it all starts with the basics. Again, working together as a team, being responsible, being on time. Because I know, again, I, got talk, I was talking about Mr. Hayward, and I know if we were late for practice, we wouldn't even touch a ball. We had to hit the line. Period. We running, running suicides. Anybody know suicides, there's no joke. Run them suicides, run them sprints. You know, we had to do that. And then we learn from that. Now we better be on time. Right. You know, so uh -huh. things like that, you, you, you're taught. Sports teach you that. So as you get older, you know, you have to be on time for work. That's fact. You know, you have, and you have to be on time for your classes in, in college. Because you're out on your own now. Moms ain't going to wake you up no more. You got to get up on your own. <laughs> you better believe. You know what I'm saying? You know, so these are, these are the type of things that, that, that are taught through sports. And so it's more than just what we see on the court is what the preparation, you know, that, that we see. And, and, and Kobe Bryant was the epitome of that. Anybody that knows anything about basketball, knew anything about the Lakers, knew that Kobe Bryant was anal about that. And he even checked Shaquille O'Neal. Because Shaq had a, had a um, uh, I don't know, a habit of coming into the, the season out of shape. So he would use the season to work his way into shape. Right. Yeah, and, and Kobe had a huge issue with that. That's why they used to bump heads, you know. Right. You know, Kobe actually swung on Shaq. Right. That that was like suicide, but <laughs> you know what I mean. But that but that's how passionate he was about the game and preparation for the game. That's why he was so great uh, because of those little little small little habits, you know. And he looked at Shaq too. Was like, look, big fella, you dominate now, but just imagine if you really took the game serious, how much greater you would be. Right. And how much greater we would be as a team, you know? So it's little things like that, that, that um, you know, he passed down to other players, and you see them picking up on those things, and you hear them talking like that. Like, they doing the same. That's that mamba mentality. Is it a black mama? Like, that snake mentality come up and bite you. Right. And that's why he was so great, because he did those things. So if we, nothing else, if we, as people would, put those into our lives, our daily lives, and what we do, think about how much greater we could be. Right. You know, and yeah. whatever it is we do, if you teach yeah. or, I don't know, you flip burgers at McDonald's or whatever you do, have that mamba, mamba mentality where uh, I'm going to be the best at whatever it is I do. And I'm not going to leave, you know, no, the old saying, I don't want to leave no stone unturned. Yeah. Cross all my T's. Yeah. Dot all my eyes and everything. That's I think that's the biggest legacy, the biggest thing that you can take from what Kobe brought, aside from his great talent on the court, but his preparation to get to that. Right, J Mo, you know, yeah. when you do a show, you know, everybody see Beyonce and Jay doing their thing. Right, you know, and but they don't know it took you and your crew hours to put that together. Right, you they don't know? see the people behind them. That's right. A lot of people behind them to make that happen, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, man, it's, it's again, um, huge loss to not just basketball, not just the NBA, not just the Lakers, but a loss to humanity. Um, True. You know, and Reggae Paul, you know, just talked about, yeah, Reggae Paul just talked about, um, what we said earlier, man, it's like, um, people who just act, just do anything in life, they seem to win. Every you know? time. Uh, Every time. And, and, and those who are like Kobe, man, it's, 
I don't know, man. But we was talking about Shaq. We're gonna play real quick. We're gonna play a clip from um, Shaq and Kobe. They had an interview, um, and it was always a huge thing about them beefing and and not getting along. And 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 one of the things that they did, uh, they they came to an agreement. They had that talk. They talked it out. And, and and what it boiled down to, like Kobe said, it was just I expected more, you know, from him. And and even Shaq said. I came a lot of times. I came into uh, the season out of shape because I knew he was going to hold it down until I got right. That's what we told right. Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to play a little bit of the Kobe and Shaq interview, and they kind of aired some things out and said, you know, how they felt about things, and they did it two two men, man right. to man. Right. You know what I'm saying? And sort of to bury the hatchet, so to speak. Right. So um, we're going to play a portion of that, and um, also don't forget. Uh, those who don't know, we've been talking about this for the last few weeks, but we have, uh, well, Jake, go ahead and tell, let them know who we got coming up. I have Miss Monifa Carter coming up at 530, you know. So we're going to talk with one of the R&B legends. When I say legend, I do mean legend. So yes, when, you're talking, when you're talking heavy D, when you're talking, you know, 90s <laughs> R&B, you can't mention 90s, 80s or 90s R&B without talking about Miss Monifa. So she's going to be right here on the show at 530. So make sure y'all stay tuned and lock with us. So yeah, let's get to this interview with um Kobe and Shaq, and then um we gonna we got Monifa on the other side. Gonna get into some music too. All right, it's yours radio, live ninety seven point five. Everything urban, Donio, J Mo, DJ Cheese, Ill Kid. It's, it's real quick. I, I stopped in on Ill on the way here. Oh okay, to, to okay, at the store. store. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got got me some snacks. To, that's what's on up. The way there. Can it dry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ill yeah, got it stacked up in there. That's for sure. So shout to Ill Man Groove City Market, man. I know you're from the Philadelphia area. You moved to Italy. I was, you know, hanging out in Germany as a youngster. How was it growing up in Italy? You know, did you live on a you know a a, a place that was with all Americans or were you with Italian kids? I mean Yeah, we um because we were also young. You know, I was six. My sister Shay was seven. Yeah. Uh, eldest Sharia was eight. And so we were just starting elementary school, basically. And so our parents just immersed us in Italian culture. So we were just surrounded by Italian kids. We were just learning the language as they were. So for us, it was full immersion. And there, was, there were no American bases. There was, there was nothing. It was just straight Italian. So where did you get the killer instinct from as a basketball player? Because so, for me, I used to go on the Army base, and being the big kid, I used to have to play with the big guys. Mm -hmm. They used to throw me around and, and, and beat me up. Where did you get your killer instinct from? Well, yeah, I think a lot of it um, had to do with um, isolation. Growing up over there and being the only uh, African-American kid, not being able to speak the language, I gravitated towards the game. And in that game, you find a lot of... Um, you find solace in the game. And then when you play with kids that you know, might not um, accept you because you're an outsider, uh, but yet when we come to play the game, that's my chance to, to, to get vengeance on them for not accepting me. In the, and that's where it kind of started developing. And, and throughout the course of my life, it's always been that. It's always been the outsider and having to come in and prove, you know, or, or to seek some sort of vengeance when I play. Do you remember what you told me one day in the forum when I first met you? You said you were going to be the finish it for me. What, the greatest player of all time? Yes. You remember you told me that? No, but that sounds, that sounds something, no, that sounds like that. something that I would say. <laughs> you, you, actually, you actually said that, and then you actually said, I'm going to be the Will Smith of the NBA. This was oh, really? Right here, and I was like, all right. <laughs> okay, Will, Will Smith. Whatever you said. Yeah, time has changed. <laughs> uh, yeah, now, you know, I've always had ambition. Another thing you told me as an 18 year old, I'm gonna be better than Mike. So I knew it definitely drove you. And, you know, it's always gonna be there, those comparisons when somebody's come before you and you do it. I mean, I don't know if you pattern the game after him or not. I don't know if you watched him in high school, but there was a lot of similarities. But I know, I know that day you passed up Michael Jordan. I know you was probably riding in your car like. You know what, man? I, I thought I would be. But, like, what happened is when I came in the league and I wanted to, take them on, right? I mean, all I heard was, you know, they called them Black Panther, they called them Black Jesus and all this stuff. I said, I want to see what this is about. And, um, but what happened is that we wound up 
he wound up becoming a big brother to me. Well, how you doing, man? I know where you're going. You got to get up quick. If you knew where I was going, why you go for the fake? Mike, after you fake the ball, where else are you going to go? You just your feet. Yeah, but where else are you going to go? In the game, I go for you. I spun all the way around. I go for these ribs right here. He saw something in me that reminded him a lot of himself when he was coming up. And he took me under his wing a lot. And showed me a lot of things, taught me a lot of things, a lot of leadership things. Kobe Bryant passes the great Michael Jordan and moves into third on the NBA's all-time scoring list. So when I passed him up, I remember talking to him afterwards and saying, you know, this is kind of, it's, it's you know, like he's still here. The information and the stuff that he's passed on to me, I'm breathing that spirit back into the game all over again, which is a lot of the reason why I try to do that now for the next generation, because he did that for me, Bill Russell did that for me. Jerry West, you know, guys, but Michael in particular. What most people don't know is our story goes back when I met you um, in Orlando. In Orlando, right. you guys had were playing the Pacers in the playoffs in '94, and I came to a game, and you know, Penny back then was my role model. And, you know, I looked up to him quite a bit. I asked to take a picture with him. He kind of brushed me off. I remember that. Yeah, you know, and I came to you, asked to take a picture, and we're like, "Yeah, come here, young fella. Yeah, where you from? You know." I remember that. And uh, that's when. It's the first time I met you. I don't know if you know this, but I was in Atlanta, still with the Orlando Magic. Uh, we get a call from, from Jerry West and my agent, 2 a.m., me and Jerome, we out of the club. Jerry West says, I got what you want. But at the time, I was asked for 150. I knew I wasn't going to get 150, but Jerry got me 120. So he called me up to the room, and he put the piece of paper on the bank. And before I could sign, he stopped me. He said, let me tell you something. I just acquired this kid from Charlotte. You and him going to get about three or four championships. I was like, who are you talking about? He said, Kobe Brown. I was like, all right, cool. I wasn't worried about none of that. I was just trying to get to that 120 and trying to get to that 120. And that was the first time I, I knew of your greatness. And then when you came in, you was 18, you was doing a lot. And I can remember I can remember one time in the three-on-two drill, you came out on Sean Rooks and you put it between you. Ding, 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 ding. And Dale said, shh, 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 Kobe, one day you're going to be a great player, but don't ever do that again. I had the opportunity, you know, to play against guys like Shaq and uh, Corey Byron Scott, Eddie Jones, Sergio Sabalos, and it's been a great training camp so far. I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying it to the fullest. One thing what I loved about you as an 18 year old is, is you wanted it. A lot of guys on our team didn't want it, but right. you wanted it at, at a 18 year old. And that's why in the Utah game, everybody talks about those air balls. I wasn't mad at you. For Kobe Bryant for three, another air ball. He shoots back to back air balls. Jazz basketball. And that's why I was the first one to come grab you and say, hey, I know everybody's laughing and giggling out, but one day people will fear you mm -hmm. at the end of the game. So mm -hmm. I knew that about you as an 18-year-old. You know, it was, it was fun. I remember the first practice, we had Travis Knight on the team. And, uh, I mean, he proceeded to just annihilate this kid. And, you know, just from everything, from talking trash to him to, you know, he was afraid to get on the bus. And um, one thing that I noticed about you from the jump was that you didn't respect people that you could bully. You didn't respect them. And you'd test them. And you'd see what they let you get away with. And you'd see if they would fold to that. And uh, that was the first thing I observed about you uh, and that competitive fire that you had. And then it all started making sense to me. That's how I see him play with that rage when it comes out. And that's how I see guys, when he played, they back away from him. Because they're afraid of, they're afraid of that, that confrontation, that physicality, and uh, and then I remember you taking me down to Jerry's Deli. Back in the day, we had the big, big flip phones. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have one though. You had one. You put. It. I said, man, I ain't get one of those. Man, that's pretty damn cool. We had, you know, the big joint, and just hanging out with you, man. And uh, you showing me the ropes from day one. Listen, I got beat up. I got hack and shack. I was tired, man. I ain't doing no work. I'm going home. I'm swimming. Me and Uncle Jerome, we sipping pina coladas. We eating burgers. My ass is in the gym 10 hours got, a day. One thing I know I got, I got a kid that's going to give me 40. Yeah. He wants it. Being swept out of the playoffs in May. 96 through 99 was a frustrating point. I don't know about, well, maybe, maybe a little bit for you, but for me, being one of the best bigs in the league and having that title of not winning one, mm -hmm. I think it took toll on both of us, you know? I wanted to get it, you wanted to get it. Well, I'm at uh, a point in my life where individual islands don't mean much anymore. I'm just, you know, uh, more worried about what the team is capable of doing. Uh, I admit I was, I was probably crazy 
Well, I don't, we, we both weren't necessarily yeah. stable. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. I, I mean, my thing is, I didn't want to, for us and for me, I didn't want to have that, have that title of, they ain't got one yet. Right. I remember one, one day reading it, reading in the, in the paper, oh, Shaq's averaging 20 or 30 and doing this. And the great Kareem Abdul Jabbar said, well, he didn't win none yet. Right. So is he great? And that just kind of, that just kind of, yeah. You know. Well, I, 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 one thing that, you know, um, I understood. Yeah, so that was a portion of the interview with Shaq and, and Kobe. Uh, again, that was on TNT. It's like a 40-minute interview. We just wanted to play a portion of it just to give you a glimpse and, and, and sound of Shaq and Kobe and, and what a lot of people misunderstood them. I mean, they had issues with one another, but not to the point where they hated one another. It just didn't work, you know, uh, because Kobe, again, that drive, and he had a, a different mentality of uh, high approach to the game right. that, that Shaq didn't have. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, so we um going to take a break, and then we'll be right back. Uh, hopefully, we have Monifa on the other side. So uh, keep it locked. It's yours, Radio, Live 97.5, Everything Urban. Del- Delmarva, it's tax. <laughs> 